years ago uh, doing a course and my mother was in the, in the British Navy. She was a Wren? Yes, yeah, she was a Wren. I guess she was thrilled to be able to come and see India. She'd always wanted to. Where does your heart lie now? From the east or the west? I think it's with me right now. Vali Sabaya is 22 and comes from England. You lived all your young days in England? Yeah, uh, in fact, soon after I was born, I was taken to England. And after that, till I finished school, I was in England. So you were there in England for the best part of 16 years? 16 years. Whereabouts were you? In London, uh, Barnes, North London. What was your father doing there? He was a doctor. When you decided to come here to learn dancing at 16, mm. after living in England almost all your life, mm. was that difficult? It was difficult at first. Cultural differences, you know. Their life is different and here life is different. People are different and you have to adjust a lot. In initially it was very difficult, but after some time I accepted this is India and that is England. And different and I can't expect one to be like the other. Vali lives with her uncle's family and cycles into Kalikshetra every day. If the transition from England to India was strange for her, the contrast between Kalikshetra and the Indian world outside is almost as great. Kalikshetra may be a sanctuary for classical arts, but it's also considered holy and demands Vali's total devotion. At the centre of the compound, there's a new theatre. It's also a kind of temple dedicated to Shiva, god of the dance, and should be completed in a few days' time, ready for the annual festival. Whatever their religion, the dancers are closely bound to Shiva, the spirit of Kalakshetra. That's why Bharata Natyam dancers are sometimes called the brides of God. Can you please? Angikam Bhuvanam Yasya Vachikam Sarva Vangmayam We always begin our dance, either the performance or the classwork with invocation. It's an address to Lord Shiva who is the divine dancer. It says we bow to this great being who, where, who has the world as his body and who, whose vocal expression is all the existing sounds and he has that as his language and he wears the moon and the starry firmament as ornaments and to this great cosmic consciousness which pervades the universe to this being we bow now in the dance the hand gestures are very important because they convey the meaning of the words in the song so we would like to show you the various hand gestures first Urakyo Adha Chandrascha Arala Shukatundakaha Murtischa Kapitha Kataka Mukaha Suchi Chandrakala Padma Kosha Sarpashirastatha Murgashirsha Simha Mukaha Gulascha Alapadma There are about 23 of them in this verse. Now we will do the eye exercises and you chant the verse which give the names of the eye movements. Samam alokitam sachi pralokita nimilite This must be practiced hundreds of times. An immense vocabulary of expressions has to be learned. Movements of eyes, arms, hands, feet and face put together and synchronized to music to tell a story. The other day, a gopi went to the river 
Gopi is a cow herdess. She is holding a pot on her head. She goes to the river to collect water. That's the river. And she sees lotuses in the river. That's the lotus. She sees a reflection in that of Sri Krishna. Then she looked up to see that he's there. And he smiled. And she was very shy and turned away and hid his face. The dancer's greatest skill lies in expressing a range of deep emotions, from love to the, self surrender. That is Daya, the Karuna, compassion. Now, compassion? Yeah, I will show how that works. Now, if some, you respond to something beautiful, you admire. And if you feel love, you and feel ecstasy and you open up. Then you, because of that love, you give. And you give in sympathy to younger or um, lower forms of creation. Uh, if it is affection, it comes to the equals. Uh, when it is given to the divine, then I offer my whole being and offer my affection, reverence unto him. That is total surrender of oneself. The dance has got a quality which uh, it opens up our inner nature. That is what is more important. Our I inner think. nature? Yeah. Well, what do you mean by that? My, our um, spiritual psyche, if I can put it that way. And that is our higher uh, nature, which is very sensitive, beautiful, and always a happy one. And that, it, it opens up that side of us. And then we express that nature in our art form. Art should always be a refining force, a force that makes a man better. You see, all our Indian dancing was intended to understand life and also to make, uh, give the right path for living for the future generations. You see, the purpose was that, that we should express that which is beautiful, that which makes refinement, so that they absorb it and all the experiences they go through in life is made better. Kalakshetra's approach to music demands intense concentration and the ability to memorize almost at once whatever the tutor plays. Students come from all over the world to the music academy, like Ludwig Pesch from West Germany. Uh, Indian music is, uh, I would say, the most developed classical system outside of Europe. I've tried by hand that Ara Arabian music, or at least I was interested in that. But I found the South Indian music so much more differentiated, rational in its approach. No. same time it has so much emotional quality you're at home on both sides if you want to develop that in music as an artist and what about the teacher what, what kind no, of a guru is he he's just the right person for that because he's uncompromising in his way of teaching he's not making any fuss there's not much talk there are no vanities, but he's from the very greatest tradition of South Indian flute music. 